Welcome back to Cardades.org. Today we're going to be continuing our series on doubting truth, justice, and the American way. And in honor of Veterans Day here in the States, we're going to be looking at war and peace. We're going to be questioning whether or not you can wage a just war, whether it's ever just or justified to wage war, or if in fact at all times you should be at peace. In order to do this, we're going to be looking at at the ideas of war and peace through the lens of something called just war theory. This is something that was proposed originally by people like St. Augustine and St. Thomas Aquinas, who we met yesterday with the cosmological argument, but has been continued on and on through the years, and a version of this was eventually adopted by the United Nations in order to say what is and what is not a war crime. Let's take a look. There's three different parts to just war theory. Just ad bellum, just in bello, and just post bellum. Just ad bellum is having a just reason to start a war. Just in bello is conducting war in a just manner. And just post bellum is justice when ending wars, retributions, and such things. We're going to do a video on each of these parts. This first video is going to be on just ad bellum. Let's take a look. Now, for just ad bellum, there are actually six different criteria that you need to meet in order to start a just war. Here they are. First, you need to have a just cause. In effect, something like self-defense, defense of others, protection of the innocent, or punishment for grievous wrongdoings. This is, of course, the most important and most contentious of the criteria you need for a just war. What is really a just cause? Sure, self-defense makes sense, but punishment for grievous wrongdoings? I don't really even know what that means. Or, I think it at least can be interpreted by different people in very many different ways. Number two, you need the right intention. A war may only be fought for the sake of the just cause. In effect, if one has both a just and an unjust reason for waging war, only the just may inspire the war. So, if, for example, you both wanted to wage war because a country had attacked you, but also because that country had a lot of rich minerals in its soil, you only can wage that war because the country attacked you. You can't have the intention just to be getting all the minerals and not really be that concerned about revenge or about self-defense. Number three, proper authority and public declaration. Basically, a war can't be done in secret, and it can only be launched by the correct governing body of the country. You can't have a war where, if the president has to get approval from Congress, the president just decides it's a war. That would be an unjust war because they didn't follow the rules of whatever the country is. This is clearly very different across various countries. Number four, last resort. All other means need to be exhausted. This is things like diplomatic means and so on and so forth. You have to have done everything possible to avoid a war. Number five, probability of success. An impact must be likely to avoid unnecessary bloodshed. This one is actually not included in the United Nations version, though it is included in just war theory. Probability of success is not included with the United Nations because it seems to favor big countries or more powerful countries over smaller, less powerful ones. In this case, a smaller, less powerful country might not be able to wage war at all because it wouldn't have any probability of success. Oh darn, it might not be able to wage war at all. We can debate later whether or not that's a good thing. And finally, six, proportionality. War should only be waged if the universal goods outweigh the universal evils. One may not discount the evils done to the enemy in this calculation. We're talking about big universal goods and evils of lives and deaths. We're not talking about just the goods for your country or for your country and your country's buddies, so on and so forth. So, those were the six criteria. Now, let's start to be a little skeptical of some of these criteria, because I'm a little worried. First of all, criteria two and criteria six seem to be impossible to judge. Intentionality, one way or another, is really concerning and inherently private. There's no way for me to know what another person's intention is, let alone an intention of an entire country. So that seems a little worrisome. Also, it seems that if someone, as in my previous example, did have two intentions, one just and one unjust, there'd be no way to tell which intention the country was actually acting on, or if the country had even made a decision between those two intentions. Six, proportionality, also does not seem 
possible to really judge. There's no magical spreadsheet that you go through, oh, here, 500 bad people died and 501 good people died. Darn it, I guess we can't wage war. Or, if you killed two more bad people, yep, yay, we get to wage war. That doesn't even make sense. So, it's a little confusing how one would actually do things like weighing universal goods and all that nonsense. One could even argue that four last resort will never in fact come about, that there are always diplomatic solutions that one could find in order to try to solve the problem or deal with whatever situation is developing. You could always try talking to the other side, even if they refuse to listen. You can continue to try and continue to try to bargain with them so that you would never reach the point of war. There are always more diplomatic methods at your disposal. And finally, who gets to define grievous wrongdoings? Or who really gets to define exactly what any of these specific six things mean? The international community seems to disagree all across the spectrum on what a grievous wrongdoing is. Anything from the way people treat their population to things like civil rights. Some countries think that people who have freedom are actually doing wrong. Some countries believe that you should limit people's freedom. It's all across the spectrum. What defines a grievous wrongdoing? And how can we really understand that? And more specifically, what defines anything that would be a just war? Who gets to define that? So, those are some reasons we might be skeptical of the possibility of starting a just war. Next up, we're going to take a look at just in below, which means justice in war while you're waging war. Watch this video and more at carneades.org and stay skeptical, everybody.